See, that's positive because you put into a pen that got put to a pad and that became seven, which is an excellent tune. Thank God he didn't go the other route, which other women do, you know, white people. They go and grab the knife. They go and grab the stuff. The hog type people leave them in the basement, and then you I know. I write songs about that too. Oh, I. I don't think I ever like. <laughs> I'm not surprised. I wouldn't put it past you, and I wouldn't blame you either, because doing people like that for seven whole days or six and in some change, whatever, that's yeah. just not right. You don't play with people like that. Yeah, you shouldn't ghost on people. Just speak up. If you don't want to deal with the person anymore, just say like, look, you know, I had a nice time. I really like you, but I'm dealing with stuff right now, and or I'm not interested anymore. Like, I, I take rejection, fine. Okay, you don't want to talk to me, fine, on to the next person, but don't have it in the head that, have this person in their head think that you're invested in them, and then you just disappear. That I, that, that, that whole feeling of abandonment, when you do that, it, like, it, it crushes something inside you. Oh, yeah. That happens a lot. So you have to, Make sure you have the courtesy or the consideration of letting someone know, like, look, I don't want to date you anymore. You don't have to be, you know, aggressive about it, but I'm like, I don't want to date you anymore. Like, I, I'm, or I'm, I'm thinking of dating someone else, or I just don't want to date right now. Just, just be honest. Honesty is the best part. Just don't talk. Just don't talk. Yeah. <coughs> Who this? Those demons inside you. Mm. Oh. Oh. Let them go. Or it's too late. Oh, I'm dying. No way. I can't believe this. Oh no, man. Come on. Oh no. Don't die on me. God damn it. Don't die. Fuzzy. Somebody did this. All right, so, as you can see, I'm trying to set the vibes on my end, at least. I'm pale. Well, I'm pale and I'm not pale because <laughs> I accidentally tanned myself because with intent, I would have done a good job, both my right and left, my left and my right, whatever, you'll see on the video, is uneven. I have a balcony since we've been working from home. I'm sure yeah. the guest here can attest as well. I use that to my advantage outside to set the vibes, you know, get fresh air while I'm working and set the tone that way. I accidentally unconsciously vitamin D the fuck out of my right side. So that's tanned and bronzed up. My left is still pale like I would be during the winter and the spring. So now I got to work on that, turn around, but then I got no space to do that. So I'm stuck with that one side. And let's see, by October, I should be evened out, hopefully. How did you go to the beach? Um, I haven't gone yet. Uh, I don't. I intend to because of the masks and the gloves and all that too. I don't. I got no problem with the masks. I don't know about you. I, the beach twice, I didn't have to wear my mask. Like, okay, so just make sure you're you're at a safe distance from people. Like, That's go important. somewhere where it's not a lot of people around you. Sit on the beach in your own little blanket or whatever, and you don't have to wear your mask. You just lay out there and tan. You're outside. Exactly, exactly. Well, that would be common sense, but then a lot of people will just abuse that and just do what they got to do according to them because. There's the people that want to do no masks. There's the people that will do it, but they won't socially distance. And you know how it is out here. A lot of people. I, mean, well, I went to the beach twice and it was pretty much it was fine. So just give it a try. I'm going to try that. I'll, I'll take your advice since, you know, it seems like you've been, you've had no issues with tanning as far as being outside goes. But unconsciously, I tan myself to a color that's uncomfortable for me, at least. I, I'm pale already, so I lost that. Uh, genetically, I lost in that case. But my mother got the color. I didn't. So it's okay. But yeah, we're here. Speaking of color, we're colorful, colorful language included, but not. that's not the point of. That's not the main focus here. Something spectacular is the main focus here, and we'll get to our lovely guest here as well in a bit. But again, something spectacular. I'm who this. That's an acronym. Who's hearing out that intelligence speak speaking? I do the thing on purpose with the typo in the name of the podcast. Something spectacular. Emphasis on that because it's important. It's well known at this point if you've been following the podcast and if you're new to it or whatever, then hello and welcome and spectacular is the point here too. I'm who this. Listen where you can to the podcast on all platforms available. Audio wise, Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, etc. And so be it. 
But more importantly, now we're going to get to one thing. Well, two things. First up is our guest. We got someone that, well, we as in me. I met this person back when in, uh, I want to say, February of this year, 2020, before the pandemic hit, before we got locked down inside our homes. We'll touch on that, how we met, why I wanted to have this person on in the first place, because it's vital. It's essential, like the workers out there, shout out to all of them. It's important you get up on who Poison Ivy is, what she does, why she does what she does, and to display your course and showcase that she does what she does so well, too. There's audio proof of that. She'll be able to attest to it. She'll be able to add to it and really just fill it in with detail, her backstory and all that such. But first thing to get out the way is, well, not get out of the way disrespectfully, but to acknowledge and to embrace the fact that because of this person is how we met in the first place, myself, Poison Ivy, our guest today, is shout outs to Luna Bird yes. at Laugh, Smile, Hello on IG. She just dropped her first single for an upcoming project, I guess, to be determined and or announced. It's called Kick It With Me. It's setting the vibes. It's real cool. Um, Poison Ivy, do you want to add anything to the single? How it made you feel? How you received it? I love the single. It's, I actually, she, she, um, I've been speaking with her while she's been working on her project and I've been like feeling to hear it. She's just like, I don't want anyone to hear it until it's released. So I finally got to listen to it. I think she released it like two nights, two, two days ago. And it's fire. The visuals that she has for the, the actual song start, like it's, it's amazing. And you guys stream it now, kick it with me on all platforms. Every platform, wherever you get your music from, again, Luna Bird, B-Y-R-D, by the way, just in case, kick it with me is what it's called. And by the way, also, who we, I guess who you met that day of too as well, produced by Frankie Payne. Yes. The pain, as he's affectionately known as, but you know, the pain is anything but affectionate. But you know, <laughs> he goes easy with us in our ears. But yeah, we'll go into this one first, and then we'll get right back to things with something spectacular. Our guest today, of course, Poison Ivy. This is Luna Bird with "Kick It With Me." As far as the vibes are concerned, it's always essential to set the vibes properly, as we're doing right now. Again, something spectacular. I'm who this, by the way. But right now, 
if I could step aside, I would. But then I'd be doing a bad job just letting her ramble for as long as she has to without no main focus. But again, we want to do a job right. We want to make sure it's essential that you get up on and know who is Poison Ivy. Poison, I'm assuming that's not your real government name. You don't have to give up the full deets, but would you at least bless us with what your first name is? My first actual name is Jalisa. Jalisa. How is that spelled? J-A-L-E-E-S-A. -E -E -S -S -A. E so I was named, I was actually named after the character on the, the show A Different World. I keep hearing about A Different World. I, I'll be honest, I never watched it. Come on. I know. I remember you talking about that in your last podcast. I'm like, yeah, with, with Jada Pinkett. And yeah. I'm just like, yeah. I didn't know. I didn't know about that show. <laughs> was that the one with Lisa Bonet? The yes. spinoff from the Cosby? The spinoff from, um, what do you call it? The Bill Cosby show when she went off to college. Oh, when she was at Hillman or whatever? Yeah, I think, I think that was the name of the college. You know what it was? I, I remember the theme. And for me, at least, the theme didn't do it for me, so I just kind of tuned it off whenever it came on. I mean, I mean, I'm being pre uh, prejudicial, I guess, but Lisa Bonet did do it for me as far as looks wise, but I never invested into it. So maybe I'll give it another try. If it's on streaming, I'll give it a chance, but um, not for Jada, but for Lisa Bonet, definitely. For Lisa Bonet. Yeah, I mean, I I'm still stuck on that point at least from the last episode, which is briefly, you know, um, at least in my opinion. I feel that Will is the A-lister, and he has been for a while. Mm -hmm. Jada, not a bad actress. I'm not saying that. But I think her looks, her looks, excuse me, helped her a lot as far as she was young. It helped her. It's good, visually speaking-wise. Acting-wise, I wouldn't say she was bad. Not at all. But she didn't really stand out as far as Will, which... He might have been exaggerated a lot of times, too, or just playing off the Fresh Prince energy, per se. But he was also doing music. He also has his own television show, his mm -hmm. own show. So that's another factor into that. Mm -hmm. Oh, of course, of course. And I mean, yeah, it's it's still big that he came from being a musician, a rapper, first off, protesting the Grammys when they didn't want to televise, you know, the rap category back yeah. then, too. That took a stand. That was firm and everything. And then the transition and the acting as seamlessly as he did, that's definitely credits to him. I'm just saying Jada never really stood to me, at least. Again, not putting her down, not downplaying her, I guess, significance in that sense. But she didn't do it for me. I didn't really I understand. see the allure, per se, besides, you know, yeah. the visual. But, okay, so um, as far as your names, I'm always curious about how people spell their names or how they're blessed with their names, per se. Do you know the backstory and how or why your name was given to you as is? My, my actual real name? Right, right. Well, yeah, like my mom, her name is Lisa. So she named me Chelisa. That's pretty much it. Oh, okay. I thought maybe it might have been like how the Dominicans do it, where they mash up the mom and dad, make a hybrid of both, and then come up with something just to be unique. I mean, well, my, uh, my name originally was supposed to be Danielle. Um, and I have an older sister. She's my half sister, actually. Her name is Dana. So my mom was pretty much keeping up with the, the, the names. But then she was watching a different world, like I said, and she heard of the name Jalisa. And she was like, oh, I'm Lisa and Jalisa. So I got named Jalisa, and Danielle is my middle name now instead of my first name. Okay. So it got, I wouldn't say downgraded, but it just got shifted to middle name, yeah. if anything. All right, but that's unique, though. That's a very unique name. It's a pretty name, actually. I would have never spelled it on my own had I not asked you, but have you ever had issues with that, or do you have, like, that... Do you ever have that sense of entitlement, like, well, how would you not know how to say my name without somebody knowing you already? Um. Well, first of all, my, my name was spelled wrong from when I started kindergarten, so all of my... Um, awards and everything would be named Jalessa. So instead of two E's, it would be two S's. Um, when people pronounce my name, they say Julissa, Jalessa. They never say Jalisa. I always have to correct them. Um, sometimes people call me Giselle. <laughs> so, but yeah, I, yeah. It's Yikes. fine. But as long as people get my stage name right, Poison Ivy. Simple enough and to the point. Yeah, exactly. And speaking of Poison Ivy, this might be the season still where a lot of people brush unconsciously with Poison Ivy to plant and they have like this 
negative stigma associated to it. And then there's a positive as far as one of Batman's most notoriously infamous villains because she knew how to really make him succumb to a man's urge and needs, per se. Yeah. The seductress, uh, per se. And, and alluring as she was, too, at comics and movie-wise and all that stuff. Uh, who was the movie version? I think Uma Thurman or something, right? Yes, Uma Thurman. Yeah, she didn't do a bad job. She was nice uh, in it. I'm, but, I'm ready for another Poison Ivy actual, like, in film. I want to see someone else besides Uma Thurman. I like Uma Thurman, but I want to see, like, an updated version of Poison Ivy. I don't know who would be right for a Poison Ivy nowadays, though. Mm, you got anybody in mind up while I try to think? If I mean, any... I've seen, I've seen some like fans like they they pointed out Rihanna. Um, who else did I see? I mean, I, I really don't know who who could play, but I I thought Rihanna was a good pick. Um, I could see the allure in her doing a Poison Ivy. I think she could bring some type of justice to that role. Um, but I, I can't really think of anyone at the moment on the top of my head. Rihanna's um, a good enough choice, though. I think that's like, that'd be real good to pick. Because she doesn't have the best track records movie-wise. She had Battleship, which is, I don't know how they made that to a movie, who funded that. <laughs> and then she had, what, Ocean's 12, the all-woman version of it. Yeah. Which I heard was decent. I didn't check it out, though. She was in, um... I freaking can't remember this name of this movie, but she was like playing like an alien. I know, and like she did like a whole dance scene. Like she acted, she her acting was really good in that movie. Actually, I can't think of the freaking name of the movie. Um, hmm. Oh, you know what? I think her one of her first roles, uh, if I'm correct, might have been Bring It On, the first one they put on TV with Solange yeah. and um. Uh, What's the white girl's name? Uh, Hayden Pantieri. But she was play playing herself, right? Well, yeah, she was playing herself, which she did good, thank God, because some people can't even get that right. Like uh, Howard that Stern. Howard Stern that played himself in his movie, his biography, and even he exaggerated himself. But, you know, that's playing to his credentials, I guess. But, yeah, that's interesting. Poison Ivy, Rihanna. That I'm not mad at that at all. I think that makes yeah. total sense. And that would be dope. That would be. And I mean, she is alluring as is already, and we're all like immediately liking her pics yeah, and vids. She's, she's a mogul, pretty much. So. Yeah. And I mean, what's. She's gonna give us the album, at least give us a movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's emotional warfare, what she does with us. Uh, when yeah, exactly. She hints at the album, and it never comes out, not even one single drops, and just like, you know, Savage Fenty, you're, you know, there's new bra and panties I'm promoting, which I'm not mad at either, but still. Uh, definitely needs some music. coming out with a, a skincare line, too. Um, skin hmm. fen Fenty Skin or something like that. Oh, is And she? I'm actually interested in seeing how it works with my skin. Like, I want to buy this product, like, because her skin is flawless. It and is. she pretty much said she formulated it for, like, sensitive skin, and she's been working on it for two years. So Ooh. I'm going to try it out. I might need it for myself, you know, because of my paleness and all that. It might help me out, even out, I hope. Um, but yeah, okay, that's interesting. How did you even come up with the name Poison Ivy for yourself? What made you go with that for your stage name? Well, I love the character from um, Batman. She, I know you said that she's kind of like a villain, or she is a villain, but I feel like she's in between. Like She has a villainous side, but she also has a nurturing side as well. Especially when it comes to her plan. She's more aware, like the character not going off of the movie with Uma Thurman, but she's more like, you know, saving the planet, saving plants, mm. mother nature type of thing. Um, so I kinda that's kind of like the type of person I am. Like I can be the the villain hardcore and be alluring and sexy and stuff like that, but I also have a nurturing and soft side as well when it comes to my artistry. You're a so, complex individual. Exactly. Which, that's a good point, actually, because I guess Poison Ivy was like an extreme vegan before vegan even became a thing, or veganism, per se. But, and for the sake of the planet, I guess the plants and all that, too. Which, I'm not vegan, but... You're not? Okay. But, yeah, like, I am plants and all of that. I love the earth and recycling and stuff like that, yeah. Do you have, like, a lot of plants at home or plants with I pet have, names? I have, yeah. I, the, 
the way my apartment is, I can't have too many plants. So, but I have. Do your plants have names? I do. I have not given. <laughs> Do you call them? Oh, my little. You're saying that I should start. I should start naming my plants. I wouldn't have been surprised if you said each one had like a name, like Petunia or Penelope or whatever, for each one. But okay, I mean, you're not that involved, but you are involved. You take care of yeah. them. Those are your babies, per se. No, my babies. Now, do you do you go plants over pets? Do you have pets besides that? Are you an animal person at all? I am an animal person, um, but I don't have any pets. I grew up with. Pets like dogs, pretty much. I, I had a, I had maybe like two cats when I was younger, but mm. I've always been around dogs. But um, when I moved into my apartment, which I've had for the past five years, five six years, I was just like, I'm not ready to get a pet just yet. So my plants are, yeah, that's my my babies, my pets for now. I guess if you move into something bigger, the plants will only increase as well too. Yeah. Do you have a particular kind of favorite plant? Because I know girls have their favorite kind of flowers, colors, preferences. Um, I don't have any particular favorite plants. I just love them all, pretty much. If you could be a flower, which would you I be? Hmm. That's an interesting question. Who would identify your vibes the best, flower-wise? I want to say a rose, but that's like so common. Yeah. Um, All the white bands sang about roses at some point, too, so you got to be unique. Uh, can I get back to you on that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you think of it, yeah, just, you know, hit me with it. Boom. Gotcha. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and going back to naming yourself Poison Ivy. That makes sense now because, yeah, Poison Ivy, when you really think about it, the, the villainesque in, implied from Batman is complex, a lot of layers to it. And I saw that from you when we first met again back in February of 2020 at the Rise Radio event organized, by the way, shout out to Luna Bird again. That whole lineup was very... That up. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, I'm hoping when things go back to normal, she's heading that up again and does her thing again with that excellent lineup she put up. Everybody there was like one after the other, just like different flavors, vibes, and just unique. It was, it was amazing. And, and shout out to everybody there too present. I mean, if I can remember properly, there was um, yourself, of course, you were the headliner, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. You capped it off. Um, I know, of course, my people, Brendan, family, Brendan. friend to the show, excellent person. Um, there was another guy, Kirk Collins, I think. Kirk Boston. Collins Jr., Definitely. And, um... Uh, the guy that went before him, uh... I'm, I, like, I'm picturing his face, but I can't think of his name. The guy with the uh, motorbike jacket, I think, or something like that. Yes, that's exactly it. He has the dread. What was his name? Damn. Well, shout out to him. Shout out to <laughs> him, definitely. You could tag him or something later on. Definitely. Oh, I think... Uh, Nah, I can't. Brimo? I know it starts with a, br uh, uh, a B. Brimo, Brim, something like that, I, I think. I, I think you're right with a B somewhat, but, you know, he'll know who he is. I think we'll... Yeah. We described enough to make a police catching, if anything. If God forbid. Yeah, I was calling him, like, the... I was calling, I said that he looks like Luca from the show um, Grownish. Mm. Have you ever seen that show? Grownish is the spinoff of Blackish, right? Um, yes, with Yara Shahidi. Oh, God. I haven't watched that one in a while. I don't know. You watch anything? No. <laughs> <laughs> I do, but I don't pay attention like that. Detail. I know Grownish is the one uh, based off Rainbow's upbringing, her childhood. Wait, say that again? What, what's her name? The wife on Blackish? I know oh, it's yeah, Tracy yeah, Ellis yeah, Rosh, but Rainbow. Rainbow, right? That's and about Mitchell's just based off of her, her growing up. And then Ronish is the, the other spinoff where Yashi, the older daughter, goes to college. Oh, all right. I remember his name. His name is Brio. That's his name. Brio. Okay. See? <laughs> Took us long enough, but we got it. Uh, but yeah, um, meeting that day was interesting because it made sense why you headlined or she chose you to close out the show because you brought the most energy. You definitely put on a show. I I knew you were going to put on a show. 
outfit alone wise what you came in wearing uh the what was it the white mink uh faux fur or real fur yeah the fur coat on it was a long like to the floor fur coat i had on um this black top and black shorts but i had like um this net like diamond black it was like a mesh bodysuit with yeah, like yeah mesh over it and i had on these like um rhinestone heels and rhinestone earrings yeah like i was just trying to be all blinged out <laughs> you were like a living breathing chandelier exactly I mean. but Nobody yeah said that to me. i think it was you that okay. night maybe because that's what I got immediately. I would have said disco ball, but then that'd be calling you fat. So I didn't want to do that. So <laughs> chandelier was more, you know, no one ever, I don't think anyone can ever describe a chandelier as ugly. So they just different in style. So it's very. I like disco balls too, but chandelier is a little bit more elegant. Yeah. So it's more flattering, I guess. I'll take that. <laughs> But yeah, outfit alone, as you described it, was like, I, I knew we were in for something special as far as you closing things out. Then when it came time for you to actually perform, if I'm not mistaken, I think you might have did Fergie's Fabulous. Glamorous. Uh, glamorous, sorry, Glamorous. Yeah. Uh, any song with Ludacris, I try to forget, to be honest, so <laughs> that's not my favorite song. I don't hate him, but... I like Ludacris. I like Ludacris. Oh, he's so dope. I don't hate him, but he's overrated. I mean, I wouldn't have ever done the battle with him and Nelly I didn't even watch it so I had that little interest in it so gotcha. but yeah <laughs> but you did a really good rendition of it and some people might say it was cheating or it was easy because you just redid it again but you did bring different energy the poison ivy vibes to it you know your reinterpretation of it and then you went into your set of your own stuff too you know you yes. did the um, feng shui fresh you did seven you did another I did, one, I think, that I can't yeah, remember. I did another song called Super Cool. All of these songs are actually on my album, by the way, which is called Beauty and the Beat. Mm -hmm. And it's streaming everywhere. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I also did my song Super Cool. I did my song Getaway as well. And I believe that was it. Yeah. That might have been. It seemed a longer than what it was, I think. But I was just like in the moment, too, because you really put on a show as far again. That, that's what I like about entertainers, performers in general. When they know how to hook somebody in just by the look, even. Their attire, like the getup. It's not just about going on stage, you know, verse one, verse two, hook, 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 and then get off. And then, you know, hopefully you like me. Like, you actually invested into not the biggest of space as the Rise Radio show was, but you made it a show of your own. Uh, you did what you had to do to make everybody a fan at the end of the day like I was and like Brendan was and like everybody there was so you know again shout out to Luna because she knew what she was doing putting you at the very end and putting the whole lineup together like she did so to showcase that we might as well go into right now a brief song break but of course who else but Poison Ivy again from her 2018 release Beauty and the Beast which is on which I listen to on Spotify but available as she said everywhere you stream your music at buy it too do her a favor you know what, actually? Why not contribute and donate to the arts, since she is an artiste, or artiste, whichever. Cash app. Dollar sign, Poison Ivy Music. I know you're trying to emphasize that because you got something coming up too as well, since we're kind of crawling baby steps out of this whole pandemic and going back outside and doing things. But again, we'll get back into it and more after this one. We'll go with Feng Shui Fresh, which was from How I Knew You in the beginning. So... 2018, Beauty and the Beast, Poison Ivy, something spectacular. We'll be right back after this. And again, that was Feng Shui Fresh from who else but who's with us today. And thank you again so much. We've got a lot more to touch on and discuss. Poison Ivy. At Poison Ivy Music, by the way, in IG. She sets the moods as far as what she performs. I'm assuming now from your background, most of the videos and posts you do are from your apartment. So you set up props, scenes, and do your thing with it, right? Yes. I try to utilize as much space in my apartment as I can, especially during this pandemic because you can't really do much outside. Um, but I'm going to try to get some things done outside um, to try to get some variety in there. but 
I, for now, like I said, I've been using, you know, backdrops and props and stuff like that inside my apartment to keep the content fresh on my page and to keep my fans entertained because that's honestly what I want to do. Like you said, when I was in the crowd engaging with everyone, like I'm here to entertain and make everyone leave the show or leave off my page feeling better than when they came there. Yeah, which is good that you do because, again, you're invested in who else better than yourself. You're putting on the best show you can offer, which is, again, your uniqueness, your vibes, your sounds, to bring people back in to keep checking in on whatever you drop, video, sound-wise, everything, too. It's to your benefit because you know how to put on a show by now, which it shows. Even if, again, like I like to emphasize, it was a small space. It wasn't the biggest gathering, but it was enough of a presence there to like have an amount of people that mattered and have people that would come away from seeing Poison Ivy and knowing that, yeah, I fuck with her. She's great. Uh, you know, I want to hear more. I want to check her out and stuff. You did that. Mission accomplished because I'm not going to give praise to just anybody. If I don't like something, I just might as well keep quiet or I'll just come here on the podcast and tell you otherwise. But yeah. that's why I wanted to have you on too as well because... That's what I wanted to ask as well. What or who, better yet said, have you learned that from to put on a show? Or who influenced you? And who, who actually got you into music to begin with? Let's start there. Um, I've always wanted to do music from, well, I, know, I knew from since I was six years old that I wanted to do music. Um, to be an entertainer, performer, I've watched so many greats, Michael Jackson, Janet Jackson, um, Prince. Jay Z, like I, my my genres of music are, are everywhere. So I was influenced by them, and then I also was influenced by my aunt. Her name is Tony Minaj. Mm. Um, she's also a artist. Um, she's a manager as well for other artists. She did manage my career for a little bit. Um, but I also I knew how to put on performances or learn how to be on stage a lot through her. But she performs all the time for bands and everything like that. So I got experience, especially with live bands and performing and, and engaging with the crowd and stuff like that. A lot of that came from me watching her and observing her as well. Hmm. So she initially managed you, and I guess she might have had a lot on her plate to take care of. Maybe that's why you're not necessarily going that route now, which yeah. makes sense. So... Once you split from her, did you have to take on everything on your own, or was that something you willingly did? Um. Well, there, even while she was managing me, I was still doing a lot myself. So when me and her split as far as our management relationship, I was still able to um, do a lot like I was doing before, like booking shows and booking studio time and pretty much writing and stuff like that. But... Also, around the time that me and her split, I also was involved, and I'm still involved, with this artist development company called The Voice Box. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been developing with them for maybe a year and a half now. Um, and my whole, like, persona, everything about me pretty much has elevated from working with The Voice Box. So it's like I went from one step. And now I got to them and I'm on the next step of my artistry and I just keep elevating while I'm with them working on my artistry and my artist development. That's good you bring them up because I saw that you post them or something related to them pretty often. Uh, you as well as I think Luna Bird, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Could you touch She's more on that? As well. Okay, nice. Could you touch more on what the voice box does in general? I guess their purpose and mission? It, it seemed like something pretty interesting to take part of. Well... Pretty much it's like an artist collective. So it's me, a whole bunch of other artists, singers, dancers. Um, there's videographers involved and performance coaches. It's just like a whole collective to help individuals get better at their craft. So I can say that from me personally, being involved with the voice box, I was able to gain more confidence as an artist, more confidence being on stage, more confidence in giving direct eye contact when I'm doing videos or anything like that. Um, 
they just they just help you form you into a better artist pretty much so like mm. any artist you have to have artist development and this company is like elite Ooh. at helping artists become better artists like everyone that i'm in the voice box with i've seen from last year i've seen so much growth as far as their their voices becoming better their confidence becoming better their their style as far as when they're on stage is their stage presence so the voice box is just like i said it's an, an elite artist collective that helps you with your artist development nice so it's kind of like a artistic boot camp per se they have boot camp actually okay um, so it's just like it's it's, it's a Artist development company, they, they provide boot camps. They provide, well, they, they have boot camp. Now it's become virtually because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, they have the virtual boot camps with you and a group of other people. And in this, I guess, with the boot camps, I get, what you get out of it is like, because as an artist, even being a singer or a rapper, sometimes you feel like you're on this journey alone and you don't know a lot of people that are going through the same things you're going through, not as far as this music, but even emotionally and mentally and stuff like that. Um, so with this, you actually have other people that are your friends that are going through the same st same things you are going through. They're there to support you. That That's the main thing of this whole collective is that you have that support. This is how your confidence grows and everything like that as well. Um, but they have the, the group boot camps. They have one-on-one -on -one boot camps. Um, vocal coaching as far as it comes with singing. Um, they have songwriting classes to help you with your pen. Um, like I said, performance coaching as far as posture and how you set the tone when you get on stage. Yeah, it's a lot. So. Oh, wow. Okay. So it's really intensive. You come in not knowing much. You come out of it knowing more than enough, ready to take on whatever. And even if you do know a lot and you go in there, get to learn different different types of things or whatever to add on to what you already know mm. to help polish you. And your artist development never ends. No. You're going to be developing your entire career. Right. The ones that things that stops once you made it, I guess, are insane because yeah. times change, technology develops and everything too. So, or get with the times now, pandemic wise, everything shifted. No shows. So, and, and I know a lot of people live off of that. I don't know if that was necessarily your case, but the did the pandemic in general, I'm assuming, really kind of throw you off as far as performances, everything you had scheduled to do, per se? Yeah, actually, right when we were when we were on lockdown, when we got we were told to be on quarantine or whatever, I actually had a show that was, I can't, it was sometime in March, I can't remember the exact date, but I had a show at New Women's Space. Um, it was supposed to be a show dedicated to women because it was Women's History Month or whatever. So I had a whole set all set up and then pandemic happened and I couldn't do that show. Mm. I also had um, plans to come out with visuals for my songs that are on my album. And that kind of, you know, it didn't stop it, but it kind of, you know, set it back a little bit because I'm actually, now that things are opening up a little bit and we can more, gather a little bit more in smaller groups, with safe distancing, um, I'm gonna be working on my visuals now and dropping them. Hmm. Okay, that's that's great though. I mean, it is baby steps we're taking right now as far as getting outside back to I guess what was normal before. Uh, I don't know if you read the yeah. news right now today earlier that uh, what's his name? Oh yeah, De Blasio. He's like shutting down if not all, most of, like, the outside restaurants, whatever ha they had set up to because, well, people are breaking, you know, everything mandated, per se, to, for their own sake. But, you know, people are going to be people anyway. But, yeah, it, it is cool to see. Uh, you do have a show coming up soon enough, as per your IG, your Instagram, better yet said, on the 30th of this month, July 2020, of course. It's going to be virtual, I'm assuming, or how is that going to yeah, work? Yeah, it's going to be virtual. Um, you guys, um, whoever wants to watch it, can go to the page uh, for The Pursuit. It's underscore The Pursuit, and it's going to be on their IG Live. I believe the show starts at 6 p.m. I believe it starts at 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's me, and it's a, a, two other of my friends that are in the voice box, um, Kaya and Emily. They're also headlining. 
Um, and it's just going to be dope. So whoever wants to, you know, watch, you're not doing anything, or you just want to catch a vibe, and you want to see how my shows are, like, just watch. Which you really should, because her shows alone are worth watching and sitting and studying from. Because she does have a presence, she does have a command of the stage. Even if it's virtual, even if you're not there, literally feet away to do so, she's got it already down pat. Which I do want to talk about later on too, before we get into the next song that you gave me the okay to play, which I like too a lot. And we heard, well, I heard, excuse me, that day of when we first met and I first saw you in person, Seven. That too, and also another thing I got to ask you since you mentioned both names, which I'm a fan of, but I'm more a fan of one than the other. Uh, Michael versus Prince, who you favor, why and such, and if you have a favorite amongst both of them. But we'll get into that right after Seven, which is again from 2018's release, Beauty and the Beast, by, of course, Poison Ivy, who you're seeing and who you're listening to now, besides me, of course, who this, something spectacular. Right back with more after this one called Seven.
just like you don't exist to me. And again, that was seven. Not as long as seven is implied to be minutes, I mean, you dirty-minded person, but yeah. Poison Ivy, we're back. And that was again seven from, by the way, 2018's release, Beauty and the Beast, which is her full project. Stream it wherever you can, wherever you get your music from. That's where you're gonna get in tune with Poison Ivy, audio-wise. I do strongly suggest, again, July 30th is when she's gonna do her thing virtually because we all still have to stay safe wherever you're from, wherever you are in the world. At underscore the pursuit, their IG live, six o'clock on July 30th, I believe you said, right? That's when it starts. Excellent, so it'll be Poison Ivy. She'll be joined by some other people, but most importantly, the point of the whole goddamn episode today is Poison Ivy's gonna be doing the thing after a while. So she'll be able to show you why you need to get in tune Check, follow, share, like, subscribe, everything you need to do possible, Poison Ivy. But, Poison, we just did seven. That was a great tune. It's very deep. Is that about anybody specifically? In general, is it a mishmash of past relationships or what you've been through? Please elaborate. Okay, well, seven actually was actually about a guy that I was dealing with and he ghosted for... Six days, not seven days, but you know, you have to yeah. stretch it with the song. Um, and the song was also inspired by Tony Braxton. If you ever heard the song, um, Seven Whole Days um, by her, that's pretty much part of the hook. And yeah, so it's about a guy that ghosted, and I was tight, and pretty much everything that's in the song correlates to that situation. That one guy. Yeah. Not a man, a guy. We have to emphasize guy because a man wouldn't act like that. A guy. Exactly. But that's interesting, though, because, well, I guess as they say, and unfortunately, a lot of the best material from some of the artists come from heartache, from past so pain, uh, uh, getting, uh, proverbially speaking, emotionally dragged through the mud and such. So was it really, and I don't mean the downplay, but was it really that much of a again just metaphorically speaking tormentious mm -hmm. to you when it happened to inspire seven or was um, it more offended well, how did how did it come about that way i mean i mean at the time i mean like i was hurt by it um especially because i was really close to this person at a time where i also lost someone that passed away so it was all happening at that same time. So mm. it probably normally I could have just shrugged it off and just like, oh, whatever. As Brooklyn but does. I was also dealing with other stuff. I was just like, oh, wow, like, you know what I'm going through? And then you just like disappear on me. And yeah. So um, the, in the real situation, after I didn't get to speak to this person for about a week or whatever, like I barked on them on the phone. <laughs> I was just like, okay, I know what it is. And I was just like, I need to put this into a song because I need to get it out. And that's pretty much what happened. See, that's positive because you put it into a pen that got put to a pad and that became seven, which is an excellent tune. Thank God he didn't go the other route, which other women do, you know, white people. They go and grab the knife. They go and grab the stuff. The hog type people leave them in the basement, and then you I know. I write songs about that too. Oh, yeah, I. I don't think I ever like. I'm not surprised. I wouldn't put it past you, and I wouldn't blame you either, because doing people like that for seven whole days or six in the in some change, whatever, that's yeah. just not right. You don't play with people like that. Yeah, you shouldn't ghost on people. Just speak up. If you don't want to deal with the person anymore, just say like, look, you know, I had a nice time. I really like you, but I'm dealing with stuff right now, and or I'm not interested anymore. Like, I, I took rejection, fine. Okay, you don't want to talk to me, fine, on to the next person. But don't have it in the head that, have this person in their head think that you're invested in them, and then you just disappear. That I, that, that, that whole feeling of abandonment, when you do that, it, like, it, it crushes something inside you. Oh, yeah. Especially when that happens a lot. So you have to, Make sure you have the courtesy or the consideration of letting someone know, like, look, I don't want to date you anymore. You don't have to be, you know, aggressive about it, but like, I don't want to date you anymore. Like, I, I'm, or I'm, I'm thinking of dating someone else, or I just don't want to date right now. Just, just be honest. Honesty is the best part. Exactly. And you hit the key word there too earlier with courtesy because it's just simply put common courtesy to do so. You don't waste people's time. 
you don't make them feel or make them reevaluate themselves internally a certain way by doing that exactly. because it just messes up the whole mind here too. It fucks it up so bad sometimes people don't recoup. I mean, uh, listen to Eminem. He can't let go of the stuff what happened to him in the trailer park from back when. That made him who he is now, but still. He's still yeah. ranting and raving about it for albums worth now. How old is he now? He still can't let it go. And I mean, that that's a shame because, like I've said in past episodes, and I will keep saying, per se, and I, I know you can attest, you're a performer, you're a rapper, and everything. Yeah. Literally, I don't think there's anyone beyond Eminem, MC-wise, literally speaking, as far as formulating words, word plays, and such, etc. Untouchable. But as far as the subject matter, what's left for him to talk about that won't just be him raging about, you know, mom, stepdad, whatever, it's not there. So at some point, you kind of have to tap out, gracefully, I mean, at least. Yeah. But... That's a question I have for you as an artist, because I, you're fairly young. You still got a lot left in front of you to do career wise and setting goals, accomplishing milestones and projects after projects that come out eventually, of course, soon enough when things go back to normal, live shows included as well. Do you ever look at anybody, let's say popular, for example, again, Eminem, Jay-Z, you know, or the past uh, versus battle we have, DMX and Snoop Dogg. At some point, they accomplished great things, you know, hits, all this, icons as they are established already, but they all kind of hit a point where I kind of have nothing to rap about, sing about, perform about anymore. Do you ever worry that's going to happen to you some point too? Or do you think it might still be working and then know kind of when to transition into something else perhaps? No, I don't think um, that that will happen to me where I hit a point where I'm just like, I have nothing else to talk about because I feel like I've always had something to talk about. As a human being, you're always experiencing different things that are going on with your life. You also are listening to music. You're continuously listening to music, and you also have to adapt and adjust to the music that is go that is around you. You don't have to fully put yourself and sound like everybody that is around you but you have to adapt to the times, but still have your own, you know, flavor, own style, own uniqueness to it. Like I, I've grown up watching so many different artists. I've taken what I can from each of them, but still, still keeping my own personality within it, mm -hmm. if you get what I'm saying. So I don't think that I would ever hit a point where I'm just like, yeah, I have nothing else to talk about. I don't know what to write about. I'm so not in touch with the times or anything like that. So, yeah, that's, yeah, because just a couple of days removed from the retirement of all people, logic, it makes you wonder, he's done enough. He's got a fan base established. He's, I guess, according to them, good. I think he's overrated, honestly. I'm not a fan, but I'll be honest in that sense, too. But did you ever buy in anybody's retirement, or do you think an artist could ever actually retire fully from anything? I don't think you can ever retire as an artist. Um, if you're a true artist, music is your life. It's a part of you. It's your, it's in, to me, for me, it's in my DNA. So I can never say, oh, I'm retiring. I'm never doing music again. I'm, even if I'm not in the forefront of doing music as far as being on stage or anything like that, I'm always going to be doing something with music, whether I'm writing for someone else or doing anything else that, that comes along with music. I don't think as an artist you can ever retire for some, from something that is so ingrained in you that is a part of you and that type of thing. If you're an artist like Blueface Baby, who doesn't even, like he, he said in one of his interviews that he doesn't really care for rap like that. He doesn't, and you can tell because he don't rap on beat or whatever. If you are, if you're not invested, if this is not something you love, okay, then go ahead and make your little one hit wonders and stuff like that and then you retire. But if you're a real artist and you, you love music, this is ingrained in you as a part of you, I don't think you can ever really retire. And just like, I remember when Jay-Z did his whole retirement thing um, in like the early 2000s or whatever. Oh, four, I, I think, like, yeah. And he's my favorite rapper. He's been my favorite rapper mm. since I was like 10 or 11. And um, I was just like, what, he's retired? But then I was just like, oh, I think that was just like a, a strategic move or whatever. And as far as his career, I didn't really think he would really be retiring. Um, but 
any artist I feel that has said they were they're retiring, they I've seen them always come back or do something as far as music wise. Hmm. That's interesting because um like you said earlier too, it's more about not so much it's kinda like Madonna, how she reinvented herself so many times before she kind of then she kind of like stopped doing that. She kind of just adapted to what was out now that was kind of hitting, kind of cool and such. And then she became a joke of herself, which I mean, the classic, she was the one reinventing music. But yeah. then now she's like, well, just, okay, what sounds good? Okay, I can kind of do that and then, you know, put it out there. Or like the best example now is Kanye because with every album he dropped up until I want to say Yeezus, he was kind of reinventing the sounds or shifting the sound to what he was doing then everybody yeah. kind of followed. After that, it's more like he kind of lost his way or touch. Not fully, of course, but then it's more like, okay, what's cool right now? Who's got kind of on top right now? I'll just copy a little bit of them and then just put my kind of little bit of touch on it, then, you know, pass it off as such. But I I'm still a fan, but then there's the whole thing with the president now. There was a South Carolina speech or whatever he said that was just... I I can't even explain yeah. it. So, like, I don't cancel artists because I know there's this whole cancel culture or whatever like that. Like, I was a very big fan of Kanye when he first came out his first few albums, but for the past few years, I have chilled with Kanye. I, I haven't canceled him completely, but I just I chilled on as far as his music, as far as him being uh, his being an individual besides his music or whatever, and all the things he says. Um, and I think that he needs help because he obviously is dealing with, um, bipolar disorder. He has dealing with mental health issues. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm not going to lie. He is a genius when it comes to his music. Um, but as far as in the past, like I said, I was a very big fan, but I just don't rock with Kanye right now, especially after, like you said, with the whole South Carolina thing, he's just like, oh yeah, hurry and come in didn't free the slaves, and I'm just like, yeah. I need Kanye to think before he speaks. That's one thing he doesn't do. And I hate that people, I've said it too, early on, when whatever else is going on, when he first ran for president back at the VMAs, however long ago, and everything yeah. he's been doing since, I've tried to associate with, well, his mom passed, that was his best friend, yeah, so exactly. attached, and try to like, you know, forgive him for that. But now it's just been continuously growing out of control and what he says, what he does, who he associates with and everything too. It's just like after a certain point, you can't use as a scapegoat anymore because then you're just being pathetic and admitting you don't want to change. Or if like they implied, if like he was on medication and he's off mm -hmm. it, he doesn't want to take it. Or like he said, he almost aborted uh, his daughter. And oh such. I almost killed my daughter. Yeah, screaming it, crying. And he broke down. I'm just like, he needs some type of help. He needs some. I don't know if he's going to therapy. I don't know what he's doing because I don't know him personally. I just of course. know what I see on social media and what I read. But like, there's something off there, obviously. Yeah, and to pinpoint what it would be is like a whole thing too that'll take like a panel i think a therapist i mean charlemagne said it best when he canceled his live show with him he was gonna have with him like no this guy needs therapy i can't like put him out there like that as he is that was commendable but it was a red flag he needed help but you know what that that's too serious a topic right now i mean kanye is gonna be kanye he's gonna do what he does uh he was yeah. supposed to drop an album the day before we recorded but of course that didn't happen as he's been doing for like four albums now it'll be who knows when and what and unlike Jesus is King which was trash as I gotta emphasize no that wasn't it follow God was okay the beat but then that uh -huh. wasn't saving a whole album worth I don't know how, how did you feel about that last one if you heard it I kind of heard it I kind of I only listened to it because like a lot of my friends well a few of my friends who were Kanye fans were just like oh I love it and it's gospel and blah 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 I'm like alright I'll listen so I kind of listened down to it, and I was just like, okay. It was just okay. It wasn't just like, oh, my God, wow, this is dope, and this is the greatest Kanye's ever done. I'm, no. It was just like, okay. Yeah. If this, is where if this is where his head was at as an artist, okay, you know, 
I always commend artists who, whatever they're going through, whatever's going on in their mind, that they don't let people put them in a box and they come out with what they need to as far as music-wise. But as a fan, as a listener, I was just like, okay. Skip, 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 skip. Oh, there's nothing yeah. left. So I was like, okay, great. I just wasted yeah. whatever, how long that was. The last good thing he did, though, I will attest to it, and that's because he had help, obviously, was Kid See Ghost. I, I love that album. That was mm-hmm. really good. And Cuddy helped a lot, too. I mean, Cuddy can kind of do no wrong. So even as simple as his approach is to sounds and, you know, with the hums and all that. But besides that being cool, I hope we're super cool enough to actually go into one more track if I could. I know you gave me the okay for two. Okay. We're super cool. Again, off That's 2018, awesome. Beauty and the Beast. Is it cool with you? That's cool with me. Super cool. Super cool again from 2018's Beauty and the Beast, Poison Ivy. We still got some more coming up with her before we let it go. Stay tuned, please. Something spectacular. Who this? Poison Ivy.
All right. It's super cool of you to stay with us for this long, being committed as probably a lot of you to your longest relationship is this episode. Poison Ivy, of course. We got her to thanks for that. I'm who this. Something spectacular, by the way. And that, again, was super cool from Please Don't Forget, I have to emphasize, 2018 solo project from Poison Ivy. You, as you hear it is as you spell it. No funny spelling like a first name because that was complicated enough growing up. My first name does not have a funny spelling. <laughs> well, okay, you know what? I Sorry, that was a verbal diarrhea I unleashed, you know, accidentally. I'm sorry about that. You're, you're right. It's not spelled incorrectly because it's the first of its kind. So there's no way to incorrectly spell it. One of one, unique. Exactly. Just like you are. What's not so unique is if you're not going to watch her on July 30th. Because if you're not cool, not super cool like that track was, you need to start getting with it and get with the program. July 30th, again, at underscore the pursuit. Their IG live, 6 p.m. July 30th. You'll be able to see our lovely guest, Poison Ivy, do her thing. Finally, ever since this pandemic hit, doing her thing live, live show. I was going to ask you earlier, too, I forgot. Of who you grew up listening to or being a fan of. I know there's a difference between artist-wise. Who yeah. you've been inspired by music-wise. As I learned later on in life, there's also who you've been inspired wise, inspired by show-wise, performance-wise. Who would you credit that to? Who would you kind of not... Wise? Yeah. Definitely Michael Jackson. Okay. Definitely. Um... I know you would say you wanted to touch on Prince too, but yeah, they they both Michael Jackson, Prince, and Janet Jackson. I would say, um, performance wise, especially in their video, like the um, the concepts and everything they would have in the video when they're on stage, like the outfit choices they would have, um, the energy that they have, the dancing and everything like that. Um, that's where I got most of my performance-wise, stage presence type of thing. Um, because as, even as a rapper, like, you don't really see too many rappers doing stuff like that. I mean, as no. far as rappers, I pay attention a lot to Missy Elliott. Um, as far as her performances, because they were, like, extravagant. Busta Ron. Busta. Um, Early Busta was unique. It was just yes. setting trends. Yes, yes, yes. So it was just, like, Every time I watch the, 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 their shows, like especially award shows, BT, MTV, and stuff like that, they put on this whole production. And I'm just like, I was just like, when I was a kid, like, this is what I want to do. I want to put on productions. I want people, like I said, to leave there and be like, wow, I just had an experience. Mm -hmm. So that's who I've pretty much been influenced by. There's a few, a few, other, few other artists, but they were the main ones. Nice, but that's a good lineup right there. Missy was definitely always unique with her shows. I always look forward to him. I always love Missy as a rapper, performer, everything she did. Producer, too, when she got heavy into that, too. She was, like, underrated. She still is, actually. Still very underrated. And I Busta, agree. too. Busta early on was, like... I, I loved Busta early on from, like, Leaders of the New School and all the first couple albums he did because he was just his self. He, he wasn't shy about it. He was just so live and animated. Everybody knows this verse from Tribe Called Quest Scenario 2, the one with the most emphasis and liveliness and all that and such. Um, yeah. Well, I do have to ask then, since you did say both, and you've been inspired by both Michael and Prince, I'll go. I'll be honest. I go with Prince just because I didn't hate Michael, and I'm of the conspiracy theory, I guess you can call it, that he didn't do anything to the children. He might have just been an overgrown child himself. I think he did I don't buy into it because he could have been that traumatized from coming up under Joe, everything he had to go through to become the grandioso level musician he was, that he was just trying to relate to kids as far as having a childhood that he never had his own. So, and then people just go that route too, thinking, oh, he had to do it because who sleeps with children, which is, yeah. which is abnormal. I wouldn't trust my kid with an adult. An adult in another room but without me. Didn't live a normal life ever, so. Exactly. <laughs> what what of that was normal? At least on his come up, when he got yeah. established, we knew him as like okay, a little bit of a weirdo, this that whatever. But no denying the talent, no denying the ear, 
the immaculate ear for sound and putting together productions, even with something as simple as a song. Even though, I'll give credit to the Joe Budden podcast, they did highlight the fact that We Are the World wasn't the greatest thing ever produced musically. It, it was kind of, it was mid at best. It was. Did you ever see like the, the background, I mean, like the behind the scenes where Michael Jackson is singing and then the other, like there's like three other white um, artists. I, I don't remember their names. I think. One of them was, I can't remember her name right now, but um, <laughs> but they were like singing and Michael Jackson, he's like bopping his head. As soon as their part comes on, he's just like, what the fuck? <laughs> no, that is not the note. Like, I, I crack up every time I see that video for that song. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it wasn't there. It, it was, and then they did the remake too, however many years later that was with all the pop stars then. Nelly was in it of all people. He was the only one rapping there. It's like, where the party at, dirty? Or whatever. His name, I don't, I don't know. He still had the band-aid at that point, so, you know. Yeah, no. Nah. That wasn't right, but... uh, Yeah, I, I would still go with Prince as my favorite of all time. Again, not to put down Michael, he did immaculate work, but Prince was just, like, different. And... It's hard for me to choose between... And Michael, honestly. Um, oh, let's I, go. Let's go to a movie route, if anything. How about this? Moonwalker versus Purple Rain. Purple Rain, duh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I still love both of them equally. But yeah, Purple Rain, that's my favorite. Yeah, I I gotta watch that every year on his passing. I'm mad that they stopped playing in the theaters ever since he passed. It's only been yeah. what five or four, I think, since it happened. But. I believe that was yeah. a nice little touch they were doing. So I went to do that, but now they're not doing it. Of course, pandemic, they didn't do it this year either. But I also watch it via, uh, what is it? One of the VH ones they have on cable yeah, now. Always play that, yeah. yeah, always playing that like at 3 o'clock at Thursday morning, whatever. I'll watch it if it's on. But uh, that's movie-wise. But then he did Graffiti Bridge, the sequel, I guess, to Purple Rain, which yeah. was, uh, yeah, that, that was two prints. Yeah. <laughs> We're two friends. But, damn, I don't know. If you had to compare, okay, classics. Let's say Purple Rain, the album, versus, I guess, what would we call it? Maybe Bad? Michael's oh. Best Work? Or what's your favorite Michael album? Let's let's go with that one. It is Bad. Okay. Uh, thriller would be second. Um, Neon. What <laughs> I don't blame you. It is too hard between because, the two. Like, there's a part of me that's just like, I'm, both of them as artists, they have me in awe. Like, I'm just like, wow, wow. And it's, they're both on the same level, just like, wow, wow. How do you do that? How do you do that? It's hey, just like on the yeah. same level. I'm sorry. Yeah, you can't. And what I'll always get credit to Michael is the moonwalk was a dance. Well, it's a dance step he invented. I know there was a lot of praise. He didn't invent that, actually. He didn't? Oh, I didn't he know got that. It from, yeah, he got it from someone, um, from another dancer that taught him the moonwalk. He made it famous. Ooh. He made it famous, though. Oh, son of a bitch. He Christopher Columbus did then. He just claimed he it as his own. Know. I think he gave actual credit. I, I, could not, I can't remember this. Like, around the time he, he passed away, like, I was watching a bunch of videos and stuff. I mean, I watched a lot of stuff on Michael Jackson before he passed away, but after that, I was just like, oh, wow, he didn't invent the movie, but he did make it famous. I think he got it from, um, it was like another dance or these kids that they, they taught him to dance or whatever, and he liked it, and he was just like, you know, I'm going to incorporate it into my song, Billie Jean, and that's what happened. Everybody was just like, wow. So he made it famous. Like, whatever. That's mind-blowing. I didn't know that at all. I always thought it was just his thing, like just fucking around, dancing in the studio, whatever, he, he and whatever he does, and just started doing backwards, whatever. Wow, incredible! But I'll have to do the research to see who did invent that, because that's that pissed me off. If like I came up with that dance, I pass it off to someone else, and then they just blow up and become iconic. I think he, I think he gave credit to them. I can't remember. Like I would have to, to, to research it again, but yeah. But that's one of those, though. Like, you come up with something so iconic like that where people till now still try to master it and pass it off as such. Like, people cheat and do it on the carpet, so, of course, it's easy that way. Or, like, a wet floor. But, like, 
to take that making your own, even if you do acknowledge a person like I'm sure Michael did, he, he does seem like the person to give credit, but no one's going to pay attention to that part, though. They just care about who did it or who actually put it out there for everybody to know about. So that's yeah. the sad part. But, you know, that's okay. I mean, if anything, an endless debate would be Michael versus Prince. That's, uh, you know, opinion-based. So you're not wrong, I'm not wrong either, but then let's not make a judgment of that. But a um, couple more things before we, you know, say our goodbyes and, you know, formally thank you again for being on the episode today. We got to give a shout-out to your outfit today. At least your top, you're playing up to the Clueless Vibes, which just celebrated 25 years of its release. What was it? Alicia Silverstone, Stacey Dash, and uh, Brittany Murphy, right? Yes. One of my favorite movies. And that was interesting to learn because I think we mentioned in DMs, like uh, just talking back and forth about how there should have been a Clueless sequel, or if not by now, why? And then you said there's one actually in the making. With yeah, yeah, they're doing a reboot. Um, reboot. I, think, I don't know if they're doing a movie or if they're doing an actual show, but they want to have Dion her character as the focus and i'm just like thank you finally because i feel like there's in a lot of these movies mean girl type movies or click movies they they have a black girl in it sometimes but she's like the best friend she's just like a supporting actress and you don't really get any depth there's no depth in the character and in, in her development as a character so i'm just like fine you're gonna have a black woman Black girl being portrayed in this type of, you know, movie, girl click type movie. Yeah, which is good to see because it's been forever. I think maybe when that was 95, it came out. I want to say middle school when I watched it, like on VHS, of course. Clueless? It, Clueless, yeah. Yeah, it came out in 95. Yeah, so... I don't remember if there was, like you said, a backstory to Stacey Dash's character, necessarily. I watch the movie all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, it, there really wasn't that much of a backstory. It was just like, they just showed that she she lived in this nice rich house, and Cher's just like, yeah, we're named after famous singers who now do infomercials, and then you knew that she was dating this another Maury, but the, the other black guy, I mean, a black guy, in the movie that was her boyfriend they were having you know issues in their relationship but it didn't really go into depth of you know what was going on with her. right well i mean it makes sense because the focus was um god what was her name in the movie alicia silverstone um yeah no what was her name in the movie uh oh share what was it again shanna share oh share oh, okay sorry yeah. about that so share uh, yeah, she was the main focus. I remember she was like the big thing back when. But that's interesting to see that it'll be a different take now with uh, a black girl leading and instead. But isn't it ironic enough, though, that I mean, that's when I guess the world first got introduced or fell in love. Betty had said with Stacey Dash because she was the one that like kind of took the show as far as how pretty she was, too. And she wasn't bad in the movie either, as far as like how I remember. But then, isn't it kind of surprising how she ended up being, as far as her views were, later on when we kind of fell out of love with her, or I guess you could yeah, say I cancel? I don't care for Stacey Dash as far as a person, mm. but as an actress, especially in that movie, like, I, I love what she did for that character in that movie. But as far as the things that she discusses now, I'm just like, okay. I don't agree with a lot of things. So that's why I don't really care for her right. as far as a person and her views on certain things, especially issues that, you know, impact communities of black people or people of color or anything like that. So, but like I said, as far as her being in that movie, like I love, 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 love the character and how she brought it to life. And was she in anything else besides she Clueless? Mo Money. Okay. Um, with uh, was it Damon Wayans mm. and Marlon Wayans? Okay, I, I vaguely remember. I didn't see it, but I remember hearing about it. You all right? We, <laughs> we're, we're, when we get off this podcast, we're gonna do a list of movies <laughs> that you need to watch and, and shows you need to watch. Um, but she was in Mo Money. Um, she was in um, 
there was a sequel to How to Be a Player, um, or or not How to Be a Player. It was some or two can play that game. Some one of those type of movies. I know Bill Bellamy was in it. She was in that movie as well. Mm. She also was in the show. They did a show off of Clueless. the movie um, Clueless. They did a show. It, initially, Clueless was supposed to be a show, a television show, but they didn't want to do it. So the woman, I think her name uh, Amy something. I don't know if it's Amy Fisher. I don't. Think, I don't know if I'm getting it wrong. But she decided to make it into a movie mm. to see if she could get the green light to make it into a show. I was oh, okay. annoyed that they didn't put Alicia Silverstone in the actual show and they changed Cher, but I was glad that they kept Stacey Dash. But I think she was the only one from the movie in the show, right? Or... It was her and it was um, Amber, the one who played Amber, the, the redhead. Not not Brittany Murphy. I don't think Brittany Murphy. Oh yeah, the other was Another redhead, Amber, who was just like kind of a part of the clique, but kind of not. Like She was like a friend of me type of thing. She was also on the show. Oh, okay, okay. And so was um I think Maury, I can't remember the guy that played Stacey Dash's boyfriend, but I believe he was also on the show as well. Hmm, okay, okay. Got it. But yeah, I will be checking out Clueless again at least, just to make sure <laughs> I remember anything properly and just to get names because I'm I'm so bad with names too. That that is a true fact, if anything. I, I'm so bad short term memory wise. My name, though. Don't forget to discuss. Uh... Pronunciation. <laughs> uh, yeah, I forgot that by now already. That's that's no fault to anybody but my own. You know, got hit in the head too many times by mistake too. That was never intentional. <laughs> but I mean, uh, one more thing I want to touch on. A- as you, being a female artist, musician, mm-hmm. performer, and such, I found mm-hmm. out something disturbing. Which again, we're in sensitive times right now. As you mentioned, people getting canceled. People getting you know, the fuck out of here because they do certain things or they did past yeah. dirt. That's, you know, the sensitive stuff. But what I found disturbing on, of all things, Instagram was, let's say in my stories, when I post about whatever comes to mind or whatever female respectfully I do, because I don't even try to do like the horn dog thing with like a... a, a a nasty caption. I just try to be ironic and talk about something else while posting stuff. But when I try to put in a hashtag, I don't know how you feel about this, but it bothered me because it's annoying, first off, and it's, you know, insane for white people things. I put in the name as a part of the hashtag, let's say hashtag so-and-so, and it's if it's not the first one, it's the second one, and if not either one of the two, it's definitely the third one. It's always so-and-so's name, Feet, with the whole crowd that plays into the foot fetish and stuff. So, I mean, listen, how are we going to sexualize feet of all things? Because feet's... Er, do it on OnlyFans. It, well, you know, I'm that's OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it, though. I don't, I don't get the obsession with these weird fetishes because it's wonderful enough a thing of life, you know, to reproduce, male and female, or... LGBTQ+, plus, you do your thing there too, however you want to do it. It's wonderful. It's great. But I don't know if you see this the way I do, but don't you think that the fetishes as far as the foot, as far as, you know, the bronies, the furries, whatever else you may think of that you don't want to search on Google because it's you don't want to see what pops up. Don't you think that's mostly people way too much time on their hands or maybe way too much and nothing to do oh, throughout the, the day. <laughs> and the pandemic, too, of course, now. They'll just come up with, I don't want to know. I don't even want to imagine the number of babies that'll be born, you know, post-corona. Because there's nothing else to do. Yeah. But then, have you been asked to show your feet to anybody? Or put them on display? Um, Maybe once. But it was just like, um, I guess the person they saw like my my outfit or whatever, and I, and it wasn't showing my feet. And I've been told a lot of times that I have pretty feet, so they were just like, "Oh, I don't see your feet. Let me see your feet." So I was just like, "All right, I'll do the video." And I just sent them the picture of my feet with the shoes and my toes and done nicely. But other than that, yo, I don't really have people like, "Oh my God, send me your feet pictures and stuff like that," or videos of your feet. Like that is kind of weird. But, I mean, everybody has their fetish as long as it's, it's a healthy fetish. 
um, and not trying to fetish, fetishize, you know, children and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Child pornography and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. As long as it's a healthy fetish, then fine or whatever. You, everybody's weird. You can be weird in your little corner or whatever. It's fine. But no, I haven't really have had men or even women <laughs> seeing me up in DM saying, you know, send me pictures of your feet. Yeah, so. Thank God, because it's like the the bigger the name, the more often you see the comment on their posts, like, what about those feet, though? Let me see them toes. How are the feet doing today or whatever? And it's just, it, it starts with that. Was that? I said it is a little weird, but <laughs> yeah. I, I don't get it, but it's just, it, it's disturbing to see because I just hope no one ever has to see my feet because mine's are really bad. Well, Make sure you get pedicures and you'll be fine. Well, I mean, I could go that route, but, you know, I, I think OnlyFans discriminate, so I don't think I'd be doing well there either. And I would only show my feet, but even my feet, I don't want to see my feet. They're they're in really bad shape. I've been very, I've taken a lot of stuff out of my feet. You know, I've been angry. I've been, I, just the other day, I kicked, like, some piece of furniture and I jammed, like, the toe next to my pinky in my left foot. So now it's like, I don't know, I got to see the podiatrist now. You need to take care of your feet, self-care, self-care. Like, I was, like, meaning for things to open up. So, because I was doing my own, like, manicures and pedicures and stuff like that. But I was just like, I just want someone else to do it. Like, they can't do it the way that I do it. So, as soon as, like, the, the nail salon, I'm, I, I was just like, yeah, I'm making an appointment. I need a pedicure. Like, I need somebody to rub on my feet. I need somebody to paint my toenails and all that good stuff. I just need somebody else to do it. And yeah, just just take care of your feet. If you take care of you, yourself will take care of you. And you know, I understand your struggle now to a minimal point now because I know how women are with their feet. I'm sorry, you were breaking up a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. I was saying that I, I kind of know your struggle now as far as what you had to go through doing all that on your own as far as the petties, yeah. the manies and such uh, to a minimal degree, only because I have very weird eyebrows. You know, I blame my mother. So I had to start eventually going to the eyebrow threading lady. And even with that, you have to know which one to go to. They kind of know what to do already, go so often. And then I'm taken care of in that sense. So ever since now, I got to pluck my own. I got to cut my own too. This one's uneven. That one's darker here. And I messed up already like more than enough. So I just left them alone. And the edges are creeping in too. So Manny and Petty would be the next step logically for me, but. I think I'm doing okay. I hope. <laughs> hope just never ask to see my feet or my hands, but you know, that's okay. But Poison, thank you so much for all the time invested today, getting to know you better, getting to hear your, your product out there. I, I, I hate to associate you with like that, like you were like a drug deal. I mean, w- with your, <laughs> your music, I mean, w- what you put out there in that sense. Thank we got you. to listen to the project. Obviously, the question would be now, uh, I know you said you didn't have singles or anything in minds or anything dropping soon but are you working on anything soon enough i'm working on releasing something um i can't give you an exact date you know like i said things are slow right now but like i said i'm also working on a visual um not going to give a date but i'm trying to have the visual out it's going to be for one of my songs um on my album um because that was one of my goals this year to get you guys some visuals because everybody's been asking, like, can we, we need a video, we need visuals, we need to see something. So I always listen to my fans um, and try to appease them as well as I can um, with the means that I have. So, you know, if I got the money, you know, I need you guys to send me some too, like you said earlier, Cash App. By the way, Cash App, Dollar Sign, Poison Ivy Music. Yeah, so, but like I said, I am working on a visual right now. I'm getting everything together and trying to have it released before the end of summer. Mm. So, oh, yeah. there's pressure then, because we're almost at the end of summer. So, it'll, so before September gets here, you guys should have a visual. Um, but as far as new music, I'm working on getting something released. I can't give you a definite answer on that, but yeah. Nice. And... Before we go, I did want to ask you one thing, too. As far as your IG, everything you post up to, like I mentioned earlier, or if I didn't, I apologize, but 
it's a lot going on just for, let's say, the visual aspect. You do use your apartment as your backdrop. You have a lot of props, scenery going on too, and even your wardrobe change. It's always switched up, is always matching the vibes set around you too. Have you ever been told, perhaps, that it's too much or why are you trying so hard to do this or just for a song and this and that, whatever? I've never been told that. I've actually um, have been complimented mm. on, you know, trying to do different things to bring to life the actual video that I'm doing. Um, and I always try to think of different ways um, to, like I said, to entertain anyone who's watching the videos to make to wow my audience, to, to have them in awe, like how I'm in awe of Michael Jackson and Prince and all these artists that I told you that I grew up watching. I want other people to be in awe when they see me. And I've been told that, like, people are just like, like, I love when you perform, whether it's on video, whether it's on stage. And to me, that's just like my mission has been accomplished. So I will keep doing the different backgrounds, the different props, different outfit changes, because we live in a visual world, honestly. So you gotta like what you're seeing on the screen, you gotta on the grab stage, it. whatever. Yeah, exactly. And I only ask because I know sometimes you're still upcoming. You're still kind of as you go, performance, song, everything to put together. You're still learning about yourself, what works, what you might need to fine tune per se. I only ask that because sometimes unknowingly we have a circle around us that might say oh maybe that's too much or why would you do that now or you're kind of trying too hard to do something that might be simply done otherwise but that's good you know yourself by now somewhat and you'll only grow from here and yeah i mean i would recommend just at least following as a start poison ivy at poison ivy music on ig of course to get a better idea of what she does because with the ig tvs Everything you put up clip-wise, too. I mean, simply put, an apartment, change of the backdrops, scenery, the dressing, and everything, too. It, I'm already sold. And you would be, too, if you're smart, if you value good music, and if you like to be entertained. And you appreciate a well-put performance, like she does all the time. Poison Ivy, again, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate the fact you gave me time today to, you know, tell people about who you are, what you got planned. Uh, hope to keep in touch with you and definitely let me know when, well, I'll be tuning in for July 30th, of course. That's important. By the way, July 30th, 6 o'clock, at underscore the profit. Was it the profit? The pursuit. Oh, sorry, pursuit. Excuse me. Blah, blah. So, at underscore the pursuit, July 30th, 6 o'clock, you'll be able to see virtually live Poison Ivy do a thing. You'll hear the songs probably that we heard or she'll come up with something different, like seven like uh, super cool, like feng shui fresh, whatever else m might come to mind. Maybe you don't hear those. Maybe you'll hear something else she got brewing in that mental of hers, mm -hmm. which is alluring and entertaining. Poison Ivy, thank you so much. I just want to give you the time now to shout out whatever you got as far as IG, where they can find you more importantly. Well, I want to say first, thank you for having me. It's been an honor that you wanted to interview me today. Um, and for anyone who wants to follow me, I am on Instagram at Poison Ivy Music. You can also follow me on Twitter um, at She Is Poison Ivy. Um, listen to my album, Beauty and the Beast. Please stream, 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 stream. Beauty and the Beast is everywhere. Title, Spotify, YouTube, wherever. I also have a single that's not a part of the um, album called Anxiety, which is also streaming everywhere is pretty much me singing because I'm not only a rapper, I sing as well. You do. Songwriting, all of that. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Watch my show um, next week on Thursday, the 30th. And thanks for having me. Definitely. Thank you again, Poison, for your time. Poison Ivy, excuse me, for your time again today. Something spectacular. Please also don't forget you can tune in wherever you get your podcasts audio-wise. On all platforms available imaginable, just like Poison Ivy with her album. Again, 2018, Beauty and the Beast. Video 2 coming soon on the YouTube. Something spectacular on the YouTube. It's backslash who this is one. IG who this dot is, because that, that became a whole dilemma too. As far as clarifying, I'm not who this is. It's just who this. But, you know, by now you'll follow and hopefully you'll understand. Twitter, who this as well. I was able to lock that down. 
Poison Ivy, thank you so much. Thank you. Much appreciated.